Hello everybody. I like to continue with my upper coil um, test and measurements. And here I have the upper coil from uh, Flash Guru 1970. I will apply more test scenarios. We'll go much more in details with this coil because there are some inter interesting phenomena I like to investigate and I would provide some details. I will also use spectrum analyzer because that becomes very important to see later on the radiation from the coil in <coughs> conjunction with the load. Now let me explain the setup and let me go to the details. So <coughs> the connection seems to be similar as it was with ancient tax um, coil. The dimension is smaller from a torus point of view however the ring inside is larger. Um, <clears throat> not sure it, it will have an effect here because it's much more compressed however I cannot at the moment um, um, compare both of them so let's just see and explain and measure what we see here so we have two literally two core sides which are probably um, one side is connected to white and the other side is connected to blue, which are probably a counter running. <clears throat> he wanted to provide me some measurements or some, some layout of the coil. Um, I haven't seen that yet. So let's let's look for what we have at the moment. So <clears throat> we have two wires here marked as white in and out, and we have two wires marked here uh, in and out as blue. Not sure what white and blue stands for. Probably once is counterclockwise, once is clockwise, um, assuming. So I, I will set up and I will connect as I connected it before. So that means I have, in a bifilar fashion, send the load connected and will drive here on the input side, <coughs> will drive power into the system. So the next step will be I will investigate each side on its own, will measure, will give you some measurement details. And they're quite interesting. And then, of course, in a bifilar fashion, as it is at the moment, I will connect them and will then do measurements. Let's do that now. I did add all the measurements into a spreadsheet and graphical display. It's easier for you to visualize that. So the three colors here, the three, the three bars, are standing for the three configurations or calculations, measurements. So blue stands for the blue line or link of coil the red stands for the white link or coil and the configuration of the bifilar setting stands for the green bar so what you see on the on 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz is that both coils that means blue and white are very close in tolerance so that's good where it becomes different is when we go send to bifilar so not much happens really on 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz but when we go up then between 1 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz there is a large change especially here in the resistance and we have a drop then in 100 kilohertz that means the higher we go on the frequencies the lower the resistance is going to be that is um, not usual to a normal coil let's move on to inductance So we have the same picture here between 100 Hz and 1 kHz. It's quite consistent on, on all configurations. It becomes different between 1 kHz and 10 kHz, where the inductance is dramatically increased on the bifilar um, configuration. And the other side, between 10 and 100 kHz, it's not so much decreasing, whereas the normal coils between 10 and 100 kHz are decreased in inductance dramatically. So Let's move on to capacitance and have a look there. On the capacitor side we see a slight different picture here already at 100, kilo, um, 100 hertz. So the manual manufacturing process is taking its toll here I assume. I'm not sure if this intentional but I see that white and white and the blue and the white wire have different capacitance. Um, the bifilar section is lower than both the white and the blue wire. At 1 kHz here we are again um, level 
open blue and white wire and a low value at the bifillers um, configuration and that is dramatically decreased then on 10 kilohertz moving from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz shows an equal um, response in capacitance or values for all configurations there configuration to test this upper coil is similar to what we used before the only difference is I'm using two current probes P6022 and P6021 over here I use also my Geiger counter over there uh, to measure any X-ray radiation which I can measure with this anything else so just to be on the safe side I have um, a second camera set up to measure sense of um, spectrum analyzer value it is set to minus 30 dB and the positioning is set to zero so that means everything above that level will be reflected here as an as a little line for the frequency range in which um, the power output occurs. So let's have a look how we do with the measurements. So from a zero value point of view the current, probes, uh, current probe reading are identical on both sides. There is no power in the system at the moment only um, some small um, um, value from the driver but it does not reflect in anything changing in here. So I will send point over send the P6021 to a different position. I keep the P6022 and, and where it is on the input side into the coil and I will position now the, um, the second um, current probe um, on the load. We start at 1 kilohertz and as you can see here a difference going on on uh, the P6022 which is on channel 4 and the value which goes through the load here at the moment is 170 milliamp so 20 volt times 4 that's um, it's about 1 watt at the moment going in here and I have also mass calculation running but it's not actually um, um, shown as display but I will put it in here in the middle so that you can see that so the division um, for for mass will there be have look 5 watt per division 2 watt it's 1 watt per emission um, for example would be this one so at the moment we have 5, 4 watt and we have about 1 watt in at 100 1 kilohertz let's move up the frequency range let's go to 1.1 nothing much changes 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 and here around 1.5 I get sparks on both sides that's interesting so I need to get down in a level with both probes in order to compensate for that okay I have to get this one down because I get here large spikes here 10 watt division so I have large spikes on both probes need to get them both down so that's at 1.5 kilo. As you can see, if there's no spikes, they show both identical values. So that means that my measurement is correct. They're both identical. So that means on the input side and on the load, the power measurement is currently equal. So that means that is the behavior you would expect from a normal coil, that there is no change within the coil, going out from the coil, in, in, in terms of energy um, enhancement but however we have we have sparks and both sparks are visible on both sides inside the coil with a different probe and on a load with the other probe I need to go further down to capture that value 
it goes from 200 up to 106 amp on both sides okay go up in the frequency range let me get down with uh, to 20 watt division and it goes, uh, so that's 20 watt division now on um, the calculation mathematical calculation and that's the value you see now on both probes on different positions for um, 7 watt input currently let's go up to 40 volt let me see where we go here so I want to keep it at a level where I can still measure it so at 40 volt I have 3 watt coming here 2.1 2.3 that's quite equal I need to go down here with uh, my power measurement let's go to 50 watt division at the moment 50 watt division is almost 100 watt coming out here you can do the mass you can multiply here 3 with 1 that would be peak to peak close to 100 watt let me go up in the frequency 3 4 5 so I have now a um, slightly stronger current on a load at the moment illumination is not going on so it's not used at all you hear the coil making the noise One dot six, one dot seven, and here it drops. So it drops identical on both sides. Current illumination comes up, and three dot watt power input currently. Voltage is equal on both sides as well. Six hundred milliamp. Frequency goes up. One dot seven. 1.8 2 so power input does not change it's still at 2.8 watt 1 dot 8 getting quite a lot up here to 2.2 I know I had a 2.5 quite high value let's see if I can see that at 40 volt 3 2.4 now it drops at 2.5 both identical values at 400 volt identical um, at the moment power input is 3.2 watt Go further up to six to seven to eight to nine three kilohertz three one three two three three four I'm going up in current three 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 four 3.5 now it's getting stronger up 3.3 three, three on both sides 3.2 and then let's have a look 3.7 3.8 input currently 1.6 watt 4 kilohertz and here it drops off then again so I have around 350 at 3.5 let's say 3.6 I have quite a high value where I have sparks so the interesting part is there is some kind of threshold going on so as long as I stay below 50 volt they both behave similar here if I go up now let's go to 50 volt input 
I'm at 50 volt at the moment. It slightly changes on the load side current measurement on, on channel 3. Let's go further up. 60 volt. 70 volt. 80 volt. ninety volt so you see here at I need to change that now as well so that that, that was can measure six volt on the input side ten dot eight volt at moment on the output side okay now let's have a look I'm at hundred volt at the moment so at hundred volt I have eleven dot seven amp here on the load side at close to 500 volt and have 6 amp here on the input side that means that's the reflected energy back or the circulate energy back into the coil so that is, that is something which is circulated in the coil but that's on the load side so I assume that the capacitor is playing a very important role here actually to enhance this, this energy so that's at 6.3.6 .6 kilohertz and that amounts for a tremendous amount of energy so if I go down here so 50 watt, 100 watt division. If you see the white sparks here, you can imagine that we have here um, quite a lot of energy. So that's a 500 watt division. We have 200, that's 500 watt. Yeah, it's about 500 watt peak to peak, I would say. Input power, it's about 6 watt. Thank you.